Hi, I'm Jade and I'm a medical student in Leicester. In this video, we will cover psychosis and psychotic disorders, including schizophrenia. Psychosis refers to a loss of contact with external reality. Some psychotic symptoms include hallucinations, which are perceptions in the absence of a stimulus and can be auditory, visual, tactile, gustatory or olfactory, delusions, which are fixed false beliefs maintained firmly in the face of evidence to the contrary, not in keeping with social and cultural norms, and can be persecutory, nihilistic, guilt, grandiose or reference, where world events mean something personal to the patient, formal thought disorder, thought insertion, withdrawal and broadcast, depersonalization, and functional impairment. Compare this to mania, where, although patients may be high and elated with abnormal speech and often grandiose delusions, they do not have hallucinations or thought interference. Psychosis may be preceded by a prodromal period lasting days to months, characterised by social withdrawal and reduced function, and may also include intermittent episodes of unusual thoughts and or hallucinations. Schizophrenia is not the only disease associated with psychosis. Other psychotic disorders include schizotypal disorder, which describes eccentric behaviour, suspiciousness, unusual speech, deviations of thinking and affect, but no hallucinations or delusions. This is different to schizoid personality disorder, which refers to people who are persistently avoidant, indifferent to praise and criticism, and emotionally cold. They display the negative symptoms of schizophrenia all the time rather than episodically. Persistent delusional disorder is when the patient has one or more delusions for three months or more, but the other symptoms of schizophrenia are not present. An acute or transient psychotic episode is where symptoms of schizophrenia have been present for less than a month and therefore cannot yet be classified as schizophrenia. Postnatal psychosis is a severe form of postnatal depression affecting around one in a thousand women within the first few weeks after giving birth. Women present with psychosis and mood changes like low mood or mania. Schizoaffective disorder is when both symptoms of schizophrenia and mood disorder are present in the same episode of illness. Do you know the difference between schizoaffective disorder and mood disorder with psychosis? In mood disorder with psychosis, including depression with psychosis, the mood disorder precedes the psychotic episode. In schizoaffective disorder, they both occur at the same time. Psychosis can also be triggered or induced by prescribed medications like steroids and Parkinson's medications, a traumatic experience, a lack of sleep, alcohol abuse, and use of substances like cannabis and MDMA. Organic causes for psychosis include delirium, dementia, Huntington's, neurosyphilis, and brain tumours. Patients presenting with symptoms of psychosis should be assessed urgently, ideally on the same day, to determine their level of risk. Patients seen to be at high risk to themselves and or others should be seen on the same day by the early intervention in psychosis team. Patients who are not deemed high risk should be referred to the early intervention psychosis team still and if they cannot be seen urgently, they should be referred to the crisis resolution and home treatment team in the interim. As part of the assessment of patients with psychosis, they should be investigated for organic causes for their symptoms. Bloods include FBCs, TFTs, glucose, serum calcium, B12 and folate and use and ease. Other bloods to request include a baseline HbA1c, LFT and cholesterol before commencing antipsychotic therapy. Abnormal LFTs may also suggest alcoholism, which is an important differential diagnosis to consider. A baseline ECG is also performed as a prolonged QT interval can develop as a result of taking antipsychotics. Syphilis serology should be done. A urine drug test should also be carried out as substance misuse can cause psychotic symptoms. You may also consider requesting a CT scan or EEG if there is clinical suspicion of a space-occupying lesion or temporal lobe epilepsy, respectively. 
Patients with psychosis are managed using a biopsychosocial approach. Patients with acute psychosis are managed in secondary care and the Mental Health Act may need to be used for assessment and initiation of treatment. Antipsychotics act as dopamine D2 receptor antagonists, blocking dopaminergic transmission in the mesolimbic pathways. Atypical antipsychotics like aripiprazole, risperidone and olanzapine are given first line for psychotic disorders including schizophrenia. Typical antipsychotics like haloperidol are avoided as they can cause extrapyramidal side effects like Parkinsonism, acute dystonia and akathisia. Extrapyramidal side effects can be treated using procyclidine for dystonia, propranolol for restlessness and tetrabenazine for tardive dyskinesia. Depot injections can be used in the long term if patients are at risk of non-compliance. Clozapine is used for treatment-resistant schizophrenia, which is when two antipsychotics have been trialled and given no benefit. If clozapine doesn't work either, then ECT is usually indicated. Antipsychotics should continue for at least two years after the initial presentation before gradually reducing the dose while monitoring closely. Side effects of atypical antipsychotics include drowsiness and sedation, weight gain, restlessness, hyperprolactinemia, loss of sex drive, reduced seizure threshold, impaired glucose tolerance, and agranulocytosis when using clozapine. Patients should be counseled about the side effects of antipsychotics, in particular the cardiovascular risks like type 2 diabetes and weight gain, and should be advised on how to reduce their risk by optimizing other factors like diet, exercise, and cutting down on alcohol and smoking. Regular monitoring is essential for patients on antipsychotics, especially clozapine due to the risk of agranulocytosis. For clozapine, FBCs are done weekly for 18 weeks, then fortnightly for up to a year, and then monthly thereafter. BMI, Usenes, FBC, LFTs, lipids and HbA1c are all monitored closely for all the antipsychotics. After initiation of antipsychotics, you should watch out for the signs and symptoms of neuroleptic malignant syndrome. This is really rare, but it's a serious condition characterized by pyrexia, muscle rigidity, autonomic lability causing tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypertension, as well as agitation and delirium. CK is usually raised and AKI may develop secondary to rhabdomyolysis. NMS is managed by stopping the antipsychotic and starting IV fluids and dantrolene in severe cases. Bromocryptine, which is a dopamine agonist, may sometimes be used as well. Benzodiazepines can also be given for short-term relief of aggression and challenging behaviours. Social skills training, family interventions and CBT can help the patient to cope and manage with their symptoms. Signposting the patient and their family and carers to support groups like Rethink and SANE can be invaluable as these groups provide a lot of information, lived experiences and support to individuals. Patients can also benefit from having an allocated peer support worker, social support and being enrolled in supported employment programmes. People with schizophrenia may choose to prepare an advanced decision, which is a legally binding written statement outlining the patient's wishes should they lose capacity at a future date, for example if they have another psychotic episode. However, if the patient is subsequently sectioned under the Mental Health Act, then the advanced decision can be overruled. Schizophrenia is the most common psychotic disorder and is relatively common in the UK, the estimated prevalence of schizophrenia in the UK is 0.7% of adults. Risk factors for developing schizophrenia include genetic factors, being between the ages of 15 and 35, use of cannabis or amphetamine, and a family history of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is diagnosed when one or more of the first rank symptoms of schizophrenia are present. These include delusional perceptions, third-person auditory hallucinations, usually running commentary, thought interference, which includes thought withdrawal, insertion and or broadcast, and passivity phenomenon, which is where the patient feels parts of their body or mind are being controlled by an outside force. Schizophrenia also causes negative symptoms like reduced motivation, self-neglect, anhedonia, 
reduced affect and speech, and social withdrawal. In severe cases, some patients may exhibit catatonic behaviour. Schizophrenia is thought to be caused by overactivity of mesolimbic dopamine pathways in the brain. This theory is proven by the therapeutic effects of antipsychotics, which block the dopamine D2 receptors, plus the fact that drugs that potentiate the pathway, like amphetamines, cause psychotic symptoms. People with psychosis have a higher than average risk of self-harm and suicide. Their lifetime risk of suicide is 6.5%. People on antipsychotic therapy also have a shorter life expectancy due to side effects like cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. Substance misuse rates are very high amongst people with psychosis. Thanks for watching.